Hello community, so great to you're back. We have a brand new paper, the integration of neurosymbolic and LLM reasoning. Let's have a look. Now, what we want is an LLM with a neurosymbolic integration for the absolute precision of symbolic reasoners. Because you know, if we have an LLM, it's great, it can do chain of thought thinking, but sometimes in this chain it violates your crit critical preconditions and then we do have problems. So it is not about just some general reasoning, but it is about a logical precision in the reasoning process. And now we have a new solution for this. It is called PDDL Instruct, and it is absolutely amazing. And I just give you the result of this new methodology. And if you take an old grandfather, Lama 3, 8 billion, this achieves now here on a particular benchmark here, the baseline has 28% accuracy, and this new has 94% plan accuracy. This is a jump. I say, yes, I'm going to take this. So you remember, we have this problem a long time ago. Let's say here we have some blocks, and you have to find a new configuration of the blocks. We had here in 2023, we were already talking here about LLMs and the optimal planning proficiency and you remember here all the different planning and training ideas that we had. And it was simple that we have here an LLM. And to produce here the PDDL description of the given problem here, we have a classical planner finding the optimal plan. But yeah, it was not really working. I mean, the idea of the planning domain definition language was great. And you remember we had two files. We had here in this PDDL representation, the main domain file and a problem file. And the main domain PDL file provides you the lifted representation of the underlying rules of the world. So a set of predicates that define the state space and the action space with their preconditions and their effect. This means the transition function f is defined. And then we had a second file, the problem file. No? Provides you a list of objects to ground the domain and problem's initial state and the goal. And this is it. That we had our symbolic planner. And they are beautiful solver out there, deterministic solver, absolute logic solver, and they are absolute efficient search algorithm for this. And this is not a next token prediction. This is a deterministic system. Just to give you an example here, here we have a PDDL problem file written by GPT-4. Don't ask me why it's not five. This is what the auto went for. So we have a generated problem PDDL. You are familiar with this. And then we even have here with a context but always you have to generate a problem file and sometimes a planner and context and explanation and everything. Now, the new idea, what is it? Let's say we can combine instruction tuning of an LLM with the symbolic planning precision and the logical chain of sort that we talked about the last two years. And now we provide a deterministic external tool, an external solver, a mathematical tool that is about precision logic. And then we train the system on this. So it is not just to add a tool. No, in the training process itself for the LLM, we integrate now here the precision logic engine. And I showed you, the result is just amazing. So here we have it. This is from MIT and Microsoft, published September 14, 2025. Teaching LLMs to plan. Logical chain of thought instruction tuning for symbolic planning. Now, the idea is rather simple. Yeah, here's it. We're going to focus here mainly here at the complete video just on this single flowchart. So, what you see, we have a phase one, a fine tuning, and then comes here the innovation, and then we just have an evaluation phase, and this is our LLM. That's it. It is real simple. So, what we want. We want a framework, sophisticated two-phase training process, as I just showed you, but we want to have a relentless, refining, logical reasoning engine in the loop. We don't want that this is just a, the next token prediction. No, we want to go for the pure logic precision. So how we do this? Now, you know, we take a pre-trained LLM. This is great. We're in phase one. And the LLM is instruction tuned on the data set of the planning problems. And as I just showed you here, we do have the planning domain definition language. And as I showed you here, the problem file is there, the domain file is there, the plan file is there. Maybe even an explanation, as I just showed you a minute ago, is provided here. And then you have instruction tuning on this pre-trained LLM. So 
input is, if you want, in a minimum set, the classical pddl domain file and the pddl problem file. And then the output is a candidate plan, the first idea of a plan, plus a detailed step-by-step -step explanation of this LLM of why each action should be regarded as a valid action. Now, what is real nice and always recommend is you have to have the correct plans, the correct example, and the incorrect plans, or the incorrect example. It's not enough if you want to learn here and train here an LLM just on the positive side. You have to have also the negative side. What is not allowed? What is out of scope? What is not a physical behavior? What is not respecting the laws of physics, for example? And they make this here in a beautiful way. So for the incorrect plans here, the explanation details here, the specific logical errors, and you would say, oh yeah, now I understand. Yeah? So they show and explain why there is a logical error. So within the DDDL, they really try to give it here the complete, if you want, a list of logical errors, what happened, why it happens, explanation. And this is now a perfect training data set, yeah? why it was incorrectly applied. So teaches here the LLM, not just what a correct plan looks like, but also how to recognize and articulate common planning problems where it does not work. And this is here also providing a fundamental vocabulary and the necessary concepts of the planning logic already in the first cycle of the training phase. But now let's come to the main beauty, to the main innovation here. So let's start. So we have now a fine-tuned LLM. Now I'm giving here this data set on everything. And now we take this fine-tuned LLM and here you see here in pink, whatever it is on your screen, we have now the first step. So this fine-tuned LLM generates now a detailed step-by-step -step reasoning chain in the form of a state, action, state transition. And it does this here for a given complexity. So each state explicitly shows the state of the world, the action taken, and the resulting new state. So beautiful. You say, hey, I know exactly where we are in the learning phase. Of course, it is classical. Yeah? But now comes the interesting part. Now we do have to have the ground truth. We have to have the perfect external solver, if you want, for logic. So the external symbolic tool solver. You can go with whatever you like, commercial, open source, doesn't matter. But you have to have a source of the ground truth that is pure on logic. What does it bring us? Yeah, checks here the validity of each state transition. This is our state transition, as I showed you, against the PDDL domain rules. So this simply tells us here, yes, a go or no go in a much detailed way. Just wait a second. So instead of relying here on the LLM's flawed self-correction capabilities, you know, this predict the next token. No, we say no way. We have to have an authority that is absolutely deterministic, a symbolic engine that is the real ground truth. No discussion about this. We cannot go with the LLM itself. So we do have this external verifier, validator, whatever you want to call it. And then we have here this feedback from the verifier. Eh? And now we have to build a new instructional prompt for this LLM. But we have here different feedback. You see here we have a binary feedback and a detailed feedback. And this is also something real beautiful here. So the binary feedback is clear. Eh? Was the action here from the transition from state 1 to state 2, was it a valid action, yes or no, given here the logic verifier? So this is a binary decision. This is okay. But then the real learning process happens now in the next step. Because now you also have here a detailed feedback here that provides here specific reasoning for the failure in PDDL. So let's say the action here from stack A is invalid because the precondition holding here A is not true in the current state. So you do have here a logical argument that tells you exactly why it is wrong, what went wrong, and absolutely, this provides here additional training data. So what we do, we feed this in a loop and we let it run. And you see here a perfect cycle, a perfect loop for an improved phase two. Now we call the chain of sort instruction tuning with an external verifier in each and every iteration that is going to happen. So nice. So if you go back now, the instruction tuning here on the valve feedback is now 
you try this, it was wrong for this specific reason, now generate an updated corrected plan with an improved logical reasoning because I just showed you what were the incorrect reason why this happened. So now do a better job and we go around in a circle and a circle and we optimize ourselves. And this loop is now repeated for a specific number of iteration, 5, 10, 15 here in the paper, but you can go with whatever you like. But you see, what a nice idea to integrate this in the training process, not in the inference process itself. So there's another detail. Yes, of course, for each iteration, we apply here two distinct optimization methodologies. Because think about it. What you want, you want to have a detailed level optimization on the reasoning chain itself. So a reasoning chain optimization that focuses on making each individual step of the chain of thought logically sound. And there we define here a particular loss function for this particular task. But we also want that the total plan, that is the output then here of all those looping, is also the best plan available. So we want also have an end task performance optimization. So this means after running this whatever, after tuning the model to be a better step-by-step -step reasoner, this is now the tuning to produce better complete complex plans. And here we have a different, if you want, um, loss function. The loss function in the first case is designed to penalize here two things, an incorrect state transition, of course, and some logical problems identified by Val. However, the other, the end task performance loss function is just a binary cross entropy that you know and is classical and standard. But the idea is so beautiful. So insights, yeah, if you look now here at the baseline, we have a LAMA 3 and a GPT-4. Baseline is this performance here or this performance here. And then just look here with this new methodology. We can go from 35% to 91, from 3 to almost 60, and from 6 to 78%. This is really nice. And look, we just have 15 iterations. So you see, very, very nice. What does it mean? This is such an elegant methodology to teach you an LLM now formal reasoning. And they argue, you know what? You must integrate, MIT tells us, you must integrate a symbolic ground truth directly into the training loop. Because if you train on next token prediction, this is not enough. The symbolic prompting for a chain of thought is also not enough. The real validated reasoning chain must be externally verified and then integrated here into the training feedback in the logical feedback by VAR. So what a beautiful study, MIT and Microsoft here teaching LLMs to plan now with symbolic planning integration and it clearly shows us that the path to a more capable and more trustworthy AI that is really able to explain its decisions may not lie in purely neural or just go with only symbolic systems, but in a symbiotic training process that leverages here the best of both worlds. And I think, as always, it's not black or white. You can combine those processes. You can optimize this. And I have two, three other ideas how to further push here the frontier of this performance. So what a beautiful study. Have a look at this. I highly recommend you the paper. And if you're interested in more of this stuff, hey, why not subscribe and I see you in my next video.